I've spent a lot of years going to services and, and churches and, and listening to messages and watching different trends come and go. And all the while, there's been this frustration going, gosh, it seems like what I'd read in the Bible was pretty different from what I'd experience in a church building in a church service. And, and, and I also noticed this trend where as things became more popular in the world, the church would follow suit and go, oh yeah, that's, that's popular here. And, and as people would say certain things are unpopular, the church would almost get embarrassed of those things, like embarrassed of certain doctrines, maybe even embarrassed of the way God described himself. One of the biggest issues that you see in scripture is, is this idea of the fear of God. I mean, I mean, the Bible says in Psalm 111, verse 10, he says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And it's not that there aren't a million other things to learn about God, but he says, you've got to start with the fear of the Lord because that's the beginning of wisdom. And, and so for me to be wise and begin to understand God, it starts with a healthy understanding of fear. And, and because in the church, there was this trend where people were saying, yeah, that fear of God, that, that's kind of old school, you know, this hellfire brimstone. We don't, we don't really do that anymore. So in church, we start going, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't, let's talk about the other areas of God. But if we skip the fear of God, we won't understand the other areas. Uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And anytime someone would, would, would quote this uh, a verse on the fear of the Lord, because it's inevitable, it's, it's in there hundreds of times, but the moment they would say the fear of the Lord, they would say, okay, let's stop here and make sure you understand that when I say fear, I don't mean fear. It's, it's more of a respect. It's more of an awe. And I would read and go, are you sure about that? Because it sure looks like real fear to me. And, and, and when, when people came in contact with this God, it didn't look like just a respect or an awe. It sure appears that they are terrified. Years ago, I, I went surfing with some friends and it was probably a little too big for me, but you know, everyone was out, so I went out. And I remember falling and getting sucked under this wave. I don't know if you've ever been under the power of a wave. It's happened to me several times, but this was so different because it was so powerful. It was like my body is just tumbling and I'm just tucked in there. And I am so scared because I'm spinning so fast. I have no idea what's, which way's up. My, my, my head is freezing, you know, in this freezing cold water. I'm getting nauseous. But the worst part is I'm feeling like, I can't hold my breath any longer. I can't hold my breath any longer. And it's just tumbling, man. I'm like, when's this thing gonna let go? And, and I'm saying, come on, let me go, let me go. God, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. And then finally, finally, the last second, it's like, I, I, I can finally see a little bit of light and I just reach out and go, <gasps> you know, I get to the top and I can take this breath. Ah, oh, but that feeling of just intense fear, you, you see, that's, that's what I see in, in, in the Bible. It's not like they think to themselves, okay, I should muster up some reverence now, or I should show them a little bit of respect. No, it's, it's this out of control, like Isaiah, the prophet, when he saw God, he just goes, I'm dead, he's gonna kill me. It's just this instant fear. John, the beloved disciple, the one that, that, that Jesus loved, when, when Jesus comes back in his glorified state, John sees him and he says, I just fell at his feet like, like I was dead. I just fainted. I just, I just passed out. That's what I see in scripture. It's not this um, idea of this God that we can control. It's really weird to me how, how nowadays people talk about God with such an arrogance. Like they really believe that they're the first person that's going to be able to come before God and question him and that God's going to actually go, wow, I never thought of that before. You know, it's just this, how do we get there? I mean, think about it. If, if, if Moses and Isaiah and John and even the high angels all have the same response to God, why would I think that I'm going to respond differently? 
or, or, or that, that somehow I won't have the same fear. See, it's not even an issue of should I fear, should I not fear, should I talk? I'm just saying this is just reality. The reality is whoever you are, the moment you see God, you are going to fear Him. We all will. In Isaiah 44, verse 6, he goes, I'm the first and the last, and besides me, there is no God. Who's like me? Who's like me? Let him proclaim it. In other words, is there someone else that's like me? Then have him speak up. And, and, and he goes on and, and he says, I, I appointed the ancient people. He goes, if, if you think that you can match up to me, then why don't you declare what's to come? Okay, tell me the future. Because God goes, I know the future. I knew when you were going to be born, and I know the last day you're going to have on this earth. I know everything. Why don't you tell me the future if you want to come and challenge me? Those are the words that God uses. He doesn't say, oh, come on, come teach me something. He goes, no, no, you need to understand there is no one else. There's one being. There's always been just me, and no one can challenge you. You want to challenge me? Why don't you stand up right now and, and just tell everyone, hey, I could live without you. You see, this is the way God speaks, and I know, I know this isn't a, a popular way to talk because we, we want a more manageable God. We want a God that we can question and, and, and tell Him things and explain things to Him, but the truth is, is this is the way God speaks about Himself. And, and sometimes in, in our churches, we're almost embarrassed that our God is as powerful as He is and that He speaks so boldly about Himself and tells us to fear Him. But here's the, here's the crazy part about it, is the next verse, right after he says these things, in verse 8, he says, fear not. He doesn't say fear me there. He actually switches and says fear not. And it's, it's almost confusing at first. You go, wait a second. You're telling me who you are, and then, then once I get to this point of fear, you kind of go, but fear not, nor be afraid. Now, now, why would he say that? You see, it's actually a very common theme in Scripture. For, for example, when Isaiah saw God and he's terrified, he goes, ah, you're going to kill me? Then God says, oh, no, 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 Isaiah, it's, it, it's okay. Um, I'm actually going to send one of my angels, and, and, and an angel takes this coal, and he says, you know, Isaiah was saying, gosh, I'm such a sinner, I've said such bad things, and God says, no, watch, this coal is going to touch your lips and I'm gonna forgive you of everything. It's um, when John falls over like a dead man and just is terrified, Jesus goes, no, 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 don't be afraid. It's me, Jesus. It's the same thing that he's doing here. And he's saying to them, he goes, look, I am this, this, this is amazing God that you ought to fear. But once you get to that point, he goes, you don't have to fear me. The Bible says, if God is for us, who can be against us? It's, it's just this, but, but you have to get to that point. You have to get to this point where you understand it's not about you. It's about this, this being who is way more powerful than you. And, and rather than trying to challenge him, you can actually find security in him. See, what, what's amazing is God uses these terms in scripture. He calls us his children. Think about that for a second. The, the security of a child, I mean, I mean I, I've got four kids and, and I'm not like this big tough guy or anything, but, but if anyone tried to harm one of my kids, of course I'm going to try to protect them. And to think of the God of the universe thinking of me like one of his children? Are, are you kidding me? And, and he uses terms like friend. I mean, think of the way you would defend your friends or, or maybe even die for your friends. And, and, and the crazy one to me, the, the really intense one, is when he refers to the church as his bride. If someone were attacking my wife, I mean, what an absolute loser I would be if I just said, yeah, you're going to have to fend for yourself, honey. No, I'd jump in. I'd give my life for her. And to think that the God of the universe is calling us his bride? 
Uh, there's a security we can have. I mean, that's where the security comes from, but you'll never get there if you're not willing to, to, to get to that point of fear. I think this would be a lot easier if we could actually just see him. I mean, can you imagine if we just got five seconds in his presence? It really would change us forever because then we would see, okay, now I know why I need to fear this God. And, and now I, I don't wanna just flippantly disobey his commands anymore. I wanna take him seriously. But, but, but not just that, but it would, it would change our whole mindset because we'd realize now that I've seen him, I realize there's nothing else to fear. See, it's, it's this fear of the Lord, the Bible says in, in Proverbs 19, 23. It says, fear of the Lord actually leads to life. And, and those who have it rest satisfied. See, for too many years, we felt like the fear of the Lord was a bad thing. And we didn't realize this is the very thing that would lead us to life. Without the fear of the Lord, you're not going to understand why, why you should follow Jesus. Without a proper understanding of the fear of the Lord, we wouldn't understand the power that's available to us through the Holy Spirit. God wants you to fear Him because that's gonna lead you to a life that you've never had. And it's a better life. It's a secure life. It's a life that we were created for.